So I am in my postpartum era, and while I'm definitely not in the fourth trimester anymore, I'm still like freshly postpartum, you know? And I'm trying to heal myself and get back into the swing of things. You know, bread making. I mentioned in my last video that I've actually been cooking pretty simply, which is very true. But of course, I'm still making sourdough bread. And like I said, I'm on my healing game. I am doing my physical therapy by the grace of God. So today I'm gonna bring you along for all of those things. And with all that being said, let's hop right in. So I finally have a place in my new house to put my little crystal peach. If you've been following my vlogs since Nashville, you know that like that was one of the highlights of my day was seeing my crystal peach shoot rainbows all over the house. So in this house where I have it placed, pretty much have those rainbows first thing in the morning. I had two doughs sitting and rising overnight, a bagel dough and a bread dough. And so those were chilling and then it was time to make eggs. I try to have three eggs every morning. So I've tried four, I can't do four, I'm not quite there yet, but I'm really trying to up my protein intake like everyone and their mother, it feels like. And I've definitely noticed a huge difference in terms of how my muscle is developing. But on this morning, I love how I said three eggs, I actually only had two because we were out of of eggs but I cooked them on my stainless steel cookware because I've been trying to segue away from my non-stick I know I've loved my trusty hex clad pans for like ever but I'm still not convinced that any non-stick is actually healthy I think that stainless steel and cast iron are the best so I cooked my eggs on my stainless steel threw some cheese on top and then of course I had to have some oranges because it's me right I gotta have some oranges I'm obsessed with oranges even in pregnancy when everything made me sick, oranges never made me sick. So I cut those up and I decided to have some tapatio on my eggs. My father-in-law turned me on to that. I was very grateful. And I don't think I showed it, but I had a little guacamole on the side as well with my masa chips. Those chips are like the best chips ever. By the way, I have a discount code. I will put that in my info box. They are chips that are just fried in tallow. You can't find anything like them at the grocery store. They're amazing. And then after my breakfast, it was time to transfer my bread dough into my bread pan for my second rise. If you have been wanting to get into sourdough and you still haven't tried, you have to try my incredibly easy sourdough bread recipe. My sister-in-law turned me on to this. I've been making it for like over two years now. We literally never buy bread from the grocery store because this is the easiest recipe on the planet. Anyone else who says they have the easiest recipe, no, this is it. So I will also try to remember to link that down below if I forget, remind me. But then I covered it up for its second rise. And then I took my bagel dough and I prepped the bagels for their second rise. Really they're their first rise once they're shaped, but the dough had risen by itself. You probably know the drill at this point. I feel like I make bagels in my videos, like in my vlogs, every other vlog. So I just shaped those, you know, divided my dough into eight pieces. Now in the past I had been doing double batches of bagels, but I started to find especially just in this season where I'm a little more scatterbrained, honestly, that when I was doing double batches, I was always kind of ruining them, to be honest. So I've gone back down to one batch because I can handle that more mentally and with the time and the shaping and all of that. And they turn out perfectly when I just stick to a single batch. Like I said, I can handle it and they seem to turn out perfectly every time. These are so worth it, man. When I, before I used to make sourdough bagels, I was always on the hunt for the perfect bagels. And it was frustrating because they're not so easy to find. Like you would think bagels are like no big deal, but not everybody makes a bagel the same. So making my own bagels has like changed my life because now I know I always have easy access to delicious bagels. So I covered them up and then I let them rise. And as you can see, they rose beautifully, nice and poofy, and it was time to boil them. While the water was boiling though, I actually pulled some chicken out of the fridge to marinate for lunch because I knew I wanted to have chicken salad for lunch and just have chicken on hand. I have been grilling up meat a lot lately. Well, Dan grills it, but I'm, you know, part of the process, like right now, marinating it. This was a Greek marinade with some lemon juice, olive oil, garlic, 
like red wine vinaigrette, oregano, salt, and I think that was it. And I wanted to get this in the fridge to marinate before lunch. So that's what I was doing right there. I also always massage my chicken once the marinade is in it um, because I don't pound my chicken and I want it to be a little tender. So before I put the bagels in the boiling water, I put some honey in the water and then I threw my bagels in and I always take a little wooden spoon and make the circle like extra defined. And I do about a minute and a half to two minutes ish on each side so do one side then I flip the bagels do the same time on the other side about ish and then once they're done I take them out and I always put them on this rack before I put them on the pan because this helps the extra water um, drip off and it helps keep the bottom from being like gooey it kind of allows them to firm up and dry a little bit before I transfer them to the pan. If I transfer them straight to the pan, I notice they tend to get stuck more to the parchment. And like I said, the gooiness is more of an issue and it doesn't really bake as well. I've slowly developed a little Honey Mark Swim Romper collection because I am so obsessed with these. They're comfortable, they're cute, they have pockets. This fabric is like some kind of magic fabric because it doesn't sag, it holds its shape, which is saying a lot for a more full coverage bathing suit. Maybe this is obvious, but they're super easy to like chase around little kids in without flashing everyone. So they're great for family events, they're great for church camps. You can make a quick trip to the grocery store and it's no big deal. It also dries like crazy fast, almost like magically fast. They have extra support built in and you never have to do like the awkward, potentially awkward undressing moment. You just show up and you're ready to swim. You can use my code Nikki10 for 10% off your purchase and thank you in advance if you do. Can't recommend my Honeymark Swim Romper enough. So at this point, it was time for me to do my physical therapy. I am so happy to be back on this routine and this routine was given to me specifically by my physical therapist and I do it every three days ish so well what I mean by that is like if I'm doing it on a Tuesday then I take Wednesday Thursday off and then I'm back on Friday because I personally like to wait for all of my soreness to subside before I work out again there's different theories on this that's the theory I'm currently subscribed to that the soreness needs to like go away like my muscles have rebounded from what I've done to them so that's what I'm doing right now now lately I've been struggling with some neck injuries in the last few weeks I've thrown my neck out like three times so I've had to take a little bit of longer breaks in between but I was very excited because on this day I had been on one of those breaks it had been like a week and I was stoked to be working out again and yeah I love the routines that my PT gives me and I love having a routine in general because when you do the same routine for a period of time you're really able to notice your improvements and see like oh I'm getting better at this like these squats are getting easier or whatever so yeah this workout that I do is a full body workout it's meant to work on my neck because my neck gets kind of weak, my arms, my shoulders, my lower body, my core. And a lot of these exercise, well actually all of the exercises, while I'm doing them, I am engaging my pelvic floor and my core because really everything can and should come from your core and your pelvic floor basically is your core and after pregnancy we all know that that's wrecked now you guys know that i love moodoo systems i'm not doing that in this video but that is the program that i have done to recover um, my pelvic floor and if you want to check that out i actually have a link down below so you can just go to my links and look at moodoo systems and it's really awesome it's the program that i used after both babies but i started it earlier this time and i think that that was a very good move so I do that still I kind of pepper that in but for the first like two to three months I think 
that was actually all I was doing before I started my PT. Um, but I do love my physical therapy routine. I have been working with my physical therapist on and off since I dislocated my knee a year and a half ago. And when I dislocated my knee, I actually spent six months in physical therapy with her and I felt like she got a really great idea of like my body, what I can handle, what my body likes. And so she actually moved away and we're still doing telehealth calls because I did not want to start over with a new physical therapist having to like explain everything. You know, she had her hands on me. She knew what was up. So yeah, I just really appreciate her routines. Now, this routine I have been doing for, see, as I'm thinking about it, I actually think I've been doing this routine for like two months. Um, I'm now hitting the point where if I can get back into it without a neck injury here for like the next month or so, I am probably going to be adjusting my routine and having another call with her and changing it up again. But um, like I said, I like having the same routine for a certain period of time because it is so trackable and the differences are very noticeable. I feel like showing myself doing these exercises is like a little bit awkward, a little bit vulnerable, but also I want you guys to see like genuinely where I'm at and the awkward things <laughs> that I do to try and heal. I think that, that sometimes as moms, we can have a tendency to like brush off exercise and stuff as like, I don't have time or like, you know, oh, fluffy self-care. But I mean, for me, I don't really have that luxury because I'm so injury prone, but also actually pause at this point. I want to go take my bread out of the oven and put it on the cooling rack. And then I made my way back to finish my physical therapy. So back onto the little, you know, side rant that I was on. Um, I don't have that luxury, but I don't think any mom should do that because I don't think that it's just like, oh, you can wait. I think that it's so important to take care of your body so that you can be a strong, healthy, fit mom that can like run after your kids, pick them up, and you're not just going to, you know, immediately have an injury or not be able to do those fun things um, with your kids. So I think it is imperative and it's imperative that your partner, that your husband knows that there is a serious reason why you're taking care of yourself and you paint that picture because if your husband is on the same page as you that is like crucial that is what will help you get it all done because he can help you make sure that you're setting that time aside that your kids are you know being taken care of or whatever or whether it's a parent or a friend i think it's important to let your loved ones know what you're doing what your goals are and to be disciplined enough to set that time aside to make it happen because even if you're not like me and you don't like easily slip joints out of place i do think that this catches up with everyone eventually i actually don't think anyone can avoid taking care of themselves and get out like scotch free and feeling great for forever um so yeah by the way don't mind all of the chipping paint in my bathroom we're gonna call it shabby chic we still have a lot of work to do in this house just random places and we like jankily painted these cabinets when we moved in and it's slowly chipped off i think between the humidity and logie you know being him his crazy toddler self in the bathroom um like i said we're calling it shabby chic and here you can't even really tell but i'm actually doing foot exercises which you guys know i used to have plantar fasciitis and it has not come back it started to come back post-pregnancy this is a whole other topic i actually ended up changing my gait which your gait is the way that you walk um, I ended up walking more on the forefoot and that's just like how I walk now and I don't have like any plantar fasciitis pain now I also think part of it is doing these exercises but I was doing some exercises before I really think changing my walk has actually affected my feet a lot which sounds wild there's a whole story behind that I was trying to walk quietly in the house one day and Dan was like dude you're like stomping can you even walk quietly we realized I couldn't and that led me down the wormhole of the different gates that a person can have so after this it was time to pump because you guys know I pump anywhere from seven to ten times a day and lately it's been on average about nine times a day because I've been trying to up my milk supply actually the next video that's going up finally is my pumping journey slash routine so I'm gonna share everything I've been through all of my tips all of that jazz very soon including the customization work that we did to my LDs so 
Once I was done pumping, it was time for me to set up my bagels and get them popped in the oven. So I took them off the little rack where they had been kind of drying and I laid them on parchment paper on the pan and then I cracked an egg and just kept the egg whites in a bowl and I brushed all of the egg white all over the bagels. It might seem excessive, like do I really need all of this egg white all over it? But trust me, a lot of egg white makes it really good. It makes the top like extra, I don't know, tasty? I don't even know how to explain it. All I know is I eat half a bagel almost every morning for breakfast and I pretty much always tend to pull the top half out. Like I prefer it over the bottom half a lot and it's because of the egg. Then I decided to have the snack of the Siete queso chips with some guacamole as well as a peach waterloo and then I made a Greek vinaigrette dressing. I will try to remember to put my recipe down below. Tell me again to put it there if I don't put it there. It was based off someone else's recipe but I ended up adding like three more ingredients so remind me. So I made the dressing first so that it could sit and kind of the flavors could mesh together while I made the salad. And then this is like the best salad mix ever. This farm is like incredible. So I put the greens in there and then I cut up a cucumber that we had bought the day before at a local farm stand. So good. I love that we have so many little farm stands within biking distance of our house. It makes me feel like I'm living in a really sweet movie, honestly. So I cut up the cucumbers, threw those into the salad, and then I added in some very thinly sliced white sweet onion. Then I pulled some of these Greek pepperoncinis. Uh, I love this brand, sliced those up. And then my mom had actually brought over some tomatoes. So I chopped those up and threw those in the salad as well. She grew them in her garden, but she's currently carnivore, so she can't eat them. Then I threw some feta cheese on top that she also gave to me because she's not doing well with cheese right now. Cut up some of the most beautiful cilantro that Dan had picked up at the store. Then I added some salt to my salad because that's like one of the keys to having a delicious salad. And by the way, pulled the bagels out. Look at how amazing it all looks. And once the chicken was cooked and cooled, I chopped that up, threw that on the salad, and then it was time to start making my brother's birthday cake. Now I wanted to go with a really simple ice cream cake of just vanilla ice cream, some Newman's own like Oreo cookies as the crust, but then I needed to put these candied cashews on top to make it like just have a more complex, special taste to it. So I toasted up my cashews. I love how I said, no nonstick. I'm still using my nonstick, people. I'm just segueing away one step at a time, and I do really like these pans. And once the nuts were toasted, I poured on some organic maple syrup from Costco. It's the bomb. And let that cook till it basically like candied the nuts. And once it had all kind of soaked in and reduced, then I took the nuts off of the pan and put it on a parchment paper to cool because I was going to eventually actually chop the nuts up even more finely. And I did not get any footage of the cake. I forgot, but here's a cute little picture of my bro. Thought you'd enjoy it. Then the day got away from me. I also did not film this, but I ended up making some stuffed beef jalapenos. I had leftover ground beef that I had made into nachos the day before. So I added it with some cream cheese, some extra seasoning, stuffed them in peppers that we had also gotten from our farm stand and then let those sit out. Like I didn't put them in the oven right away, but I put on my ARP wave therapy, which is like an electrotherapy. It's kind of hard to explain here in this short voiceover, but I put it on, this machine is amazing. And then I took Lizzie for a walk around the block while I wore my electro stimulating whatever <laughs> i love that thing so that is it for this video guys i know a lot of you had missed my vlogs and i hope that this didn't disappoint you my life has been pretty chill my meals have been pretty repetitive lately and i hope that this could encourage you or inspire you in your day to go live your best day and i will god willing see you guys back here soon with another new video bye